I wanted to start by thanking again everyone at Automobility LA for this opportunity to share our thinking with you today. As a leader of strategic research for Honda R&D in North America, my job touches many different aspects of our business, helping guide our new product and technology business, as well as including significant opportunities in the connected vehicle space. Today, I want to share with you Honda's vision for a collision-free mobility in the future and how we are turning this vision into action. My last major assignment was leading global development of the Acura NSX. Now, you might look at a supercar as the antithesis of the driverless vehicles that many people are imagining will be here in the near future. Heck, our whole team spent an amazing amount of time perfecting the look and the feel of the steering wheel. And now major automakers are looking forward to getting rid of the steering wheel altogether. But what links the development of the NSX to our connected and autonomous future is the same guiding force that has led Honda from the very start. It was our founder's belief that the purpose of technology is to help people. So while our goal of creating a collision-free future may not be seen as unique, I firmly believe that we are unique in our approach to this challenge. At Honda, we take a holistic view. It starts with, but is not limited to only the driver. Honda looks at the future of mobility through the lens of all road users. We want to think about encompassing the entire transportation ecosystem, including, of course, next generation connected, autonomous, electrified vehicles, as well as complex interactions of people, the vehicles, and the infrastructure. We also have to consider, of course, the important roles of government, academia, as well as our business partners. We also recognize the important role of collaboration in this space. Now, recently, we made a bit of news with the announcement of Honda's partnership with GM and Cruz, and we're jointly going to develop a shared autonomous vehicle. I don't have any news to break on this particular project, though our operations in Ohio will definitely be involved. However, Honda is conducting our own internal research and development for connected and autonomous vehicles targeting personal use. In this area, we're developing this technology, targeting SA Level 3 for the year 2020 and SAE Level 4 for personal use by the year 2025. But our goal isn't autonomy for autonomy's sake. Our efforts are aimed towards a more essential idea for future mobility. 15 years ago, we established a global safety direction called Safety for Everyone. Our concept recognized the fact that Honda is unique in that it creates many different types of mobility. And we also realized that to save lives, we cannot only look at protecting the driver and occupants of a given vehicle. We have to look again at the entire ecosystem, advance safety for everyone who shares the road, other cars, pedestrians, bicyclists, motorcycles, you name it. In other words, for all road users. So safety for everyone means working towards a collision-free society where all road users can safely and confidently enjoy the freedom of mobility. That is the very core of Honda's vision. A critical step in this direction came with the deployment of our advanced safety and driver assistive systems. We call these Honda Sensing and Acura Watch. And today, we have more than 1.7 million Honda and Acura vehicles on the road. These advanced systems will continue to increase the safety, and we will move towards standard application with full deployment by the year 2022. Our data, as well as third-party data, shows that Honda Sensing is reducing both the frequency and severity of vehicle collisions on the road today. But in addition, Honda Sensing performs another important function. 
It acts as both the technological and perceptual bridge towards the more highly automated vehicles of the future. Honda Sensing is not only giving our customers an understanding of technology-assisted driving, we're providing them with confidence in what value a connected and autonomous vehicle will provide to them in the future. And let's face it, customer confidence is a key challenge. Depending on which study you read, one half to two thirds of all customers, they say that they're uncomfortable with the idea of self-driving vehicles. Now some of that, I'm afraid, ties back to how these systems have been deployed and promoted to customers. For our part, we've really drawn a line in the sand. We've said that these initial technologies will be referred to as driver-assistive technologies. Honda has made it clear that, for now anyway, the driver still has the ultimate responsibility for the safe operation of their vehicle. And that brings me to a key point. Moving forward as leaders and innovators in the autonomous and connected space, we have to be realistic and transparent in our conversations with each other, with other stakeholders, and with our customers. To that end, I want to be as clear as I can in talking about what we see as both the opportunities as well as the challenges of realizing our dream for a collision-free mobility future. Let's start by considering how we drive. The act of piloting a motor vehicle is actually very complex. Your eyes, your ears, and your brain are still far and away the most advanced sensing and data processing system that we know of. Automated technology as it exists today can and does significantly mitigate driver's errors. It helps you if you're distracted. It helps you have better reaction times. In certain conditions, such as on the freeway, as long as the weather is good, we're already close to autonomous driving capability. However, the jump from there to fully replacing you as a driver in all scenarios, congested urban settings, a mall parking lot, or simply dropping your kids off at school in the morning. Now that's a challenge of a completely different magnitude. And moreover, any single autonomous vehicle relying only on its onboard sensors faces fundamental limits to what it can see and sense. Therefore, anything we can do to expand the sensing capabilities of a human driver or an autonomous vehicle by connecting them to the infrastructure that should realize an improved outcome. And finally, even if we could make the leap today to fully autonomous vehicle technology, it would take decades for that technology to saturate the market. So in the meantime, these vehicles need to be able to coexist peacefully with all road users. This is the real world in which we're operating. Yes, we have a clear, exciting vision for a collision-free society. But to get there, we have to understand and respect the challenges that we face. So number one, we have to account for all road users. And like the Physician's Creed, First, do no harm. It's wonderful to talk about and consider technology's benefits to society in aggregate. But improvements to our collective safety can't come at the cost of anyone's individual safety. Number two, we have to be realistic in our assessment of each and every technology's capability, but also consider the limitations. At Honda, we have long been guided by what we call the three realities principle. This principle teaches us that when confronted with any problem, you have to go to the real place, understand the real situation, and make realistic decisions. That doesn't mean we can't and shouldn't be extremely optimistic, but the decisions we make have to be based in reality. Finally, we need to create solutions by taking into account all aspects of a very complex transportation ecosystem, not only the vehicles and the infrastructure, but the total physical, the social, the regulatory, and the legal structure of the system. We're not just developing technology as we look to the future. We need 
to together work to architect desired outcomes. So from Honda's R&D perspective, these are the fundamentals. And one indispensable component of realizing them is the ability to go to the actual spot, to safely move our technology from a proving grounds environment to a dynamic setting that includes both connected and non-connected vehicles. It includes pedestrians, emergency vehicles, and more. Of course, in short, we're talking about pilot studies in the real world. Now, in central Ohio, our US R&D, as well as our manufacturing operations, have been working with our long-term partners in government and academia to help develop just such a pilot evaluation environment. Starting in 2016, we supported our partners, and they put together Columbus's winning grant application for the US Department of Transportation's Smart City Initiative. Now, at the same time, the Ohio Department of Transportation joined with an important complementary initiative that's called the 33 Smart Mobility Corridor. The Smart Mobility Corridor is a 34-mile stretch of divided highway that connects Columbus, an urban environment, to Dublin, a suburban environment, Marysville, a rural environment, and ultimately to our R&D center where we have access to closed course proving grounds. Next year, when we complete the installation of DSRC roadside units, the Smart Mobility Corridor will become the longest stretch of continuously connected highway in the world. The corridor will enable us to evaluate a variety of connected and automated vehicle applications, all aimed at improving the safety of our multimodal transportation system. Our commitment to this real-world ecosystem will include connecting more than 200 of our own vehicles, enabling our engineers to study and learn firsthand about not only the technical opportunities, but the challenges surrounding vehicle to everything or V to X. This, again, will advance our technologies, but I think more importantly, will enable us to have a deeper understanding of the non-technical or the social challenges involved in deploying these technologies and achieving our desired outcomes. Now, some of you might have questions about the use of DSR, EC versus 5G. Uh, the simple answer is we're agnostic. Our systems will evolve with these technologies. Within this unique ecosystem, I want to introduce two pilot projects that are targeted towards real-world dynamic safety. The first is a pilot deployment of smart intersection technology in downtown Marysville, Ohio. Our smart intersection is a bit more sophisticated than other connected intersections. Other connected intersections mainly focus on communicating stoplight changes to improve the flow of traffic. Uh, what we've done at our intersection is we've taken four cameras, combined those images with an image processing system, connected those images to a roadside unit, which then communicates information to your connected vehicle. So what that does is it allows your connected vehicle and you as a driver to virtually see around a corner through a building that's blocking your line of sight, through a large truck that's blocking your line of sight, so that you or in the future, autonomous vehicles can more safely navigate busy and virtually blind city intersections. So let's take a look. Well, the camera is using a fairly mature technology for object detection and being able to distinguish type of vehicles and type of road users in very challenging environment. The key part of this technology is that it's able to sense things that you can't see. It's able to do things that our eyes can't do, our ears can't do. So this technology moves us beyond where any onboard sensor is today. The vehicle is uh, traveling towards the intersection, about to make a right turn. On the right side, a pedestrian is about to cross the street. And before the vehicle and the driver could detect a pedestrian, we issue a warning. Pedestrian crossing. Check your surroundings. So the driver can slow down the vehicle immediately. In this scenario, a driver is about to run the red light. 
Vehicle approaching intersection. But with this early warning, the driver is able to apply brake to avoid a disaster. This is how VDX technology can expand a vehicle's capability to recognize and then intelligently support the human driver or a highly automated vehicle in responding to potential hazards. Our smart intersection doesn't require all vehicles or the pedestrians to be connected in order to become part of this connected network. The infrastructure's vision system essentially connects all road users within its line of sight, and it connects that to your vehicle. The second of our initiatives and pilot studies involves a 33 smart mobility corridor and a concept that Honda calls Safe Swarm. We first introduced the idea at CES in 2017. And since then, we've been conducting closed course testing of this concept in our Proving Grounds environment. Safe Swarm takes its inspiration from nature. Imagine a school of fish and how they move efficiently as a unit without even touching, almost as if they're connected. Schooling requires us to understand co coordinated positioning and synchronized movement. So this inspired us to think about how could we adapt this to what we see in our real world traffic patterns and situations. Using V2X technology, we've developed the capacity for vehicles to communicate with surrounding vehicles, share key information, such as location and speed. And with this information, the driver, or in the future, an automated vehicle, can determine the safest course of action in merging with traffic or avoiding a road hazard. We can also use this technology to impact traffic in other ways. It can take information from vehicles ahead on the freeway and give us time to prevent potential sudden brake applications, emergency braking, which then leads to uh, collisions and, uh, and fatalities. It does this, so let's, let's take a look at this video. So that was the first of the three scenarios I'm going to introduce for Safe Swarm. The vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication that we are using is the in industry standard, which ensures that all vehicles, regardless of the brand, can benefit from this technology. Now, the second scenario I'm going to introduce is hazard protection. We all know that road hazards down the road that we can't see are a major cause of uh, both frustration and traffic collisions. And so here's a video of how Safe Swarm technology can help with that scenario. So it's really all about giving the driver time, or in the future, giving an intelligent vehicle time to prepare for a, a scenario up the road. 
And so the final scenario I want to introduce deals with a phantom traffic jam. This is where uh, you're sitting in traffic uh, waiting to go past an accident that's already been cleared to the side of the road. So let's take a look at how Safe Swarm can mitigate this challenge. So this is why we're so excited about the potential for this technology. And today, I'm pleased to announce that just like the smart intersection in Marysville moved from our proving center to a real-world pilot study, in 2019, we're moving Safe Swarm from the proving grounds environment to the real world, right near our R&D headquarters in Ohio on the 33 Smart Mobility Corridor. We'll have more information about this in the coming months, and. I look forward to sharing the results from both studies, perhaps at a future Automobility LA. Together, in aggregate, these initiatives, the Smart Columbus and 33 Smart Mobility Corridor, our pilot deployment of the Smart Intersection, as well as Safe Swarm. Putting this all together, it comprises one of the most comprehensive multimodal smart transportation ecosystems in the world today. And we intend to leverage this environment to its fullest and advance our technology and, as I've said many times, more importantly, our understanding of how we can most effectively deploy our technologies, all to achieve a zero collision society. We see boundless opportunities within this ecosystem. But, as I've said, we will maintain our realistic approach understanding that the process of building out this connected car society will undoubtedly include many challenges. At Honda, we have a proud history of taking on big challenges for the benefit of our customers and society and using technology to make people's lives better. We have big and exciting dreams for a safer, more enjoyable, and more efficient mobility system of the future a zero collision, zero emission society. But we don't want that to be only our dream. This isn't simply an arena of competition, a race to be first, or a run for the money. Competition is a key driver of innovation. We all know that. But it's also imperative that we consider our higher calling as leaders in the innovation space. We will seek a dialogue, a shared understanding, of all of these fundamental issues and challenges. And we want to work together to create a future that benefits all road users. In this way, we can move from my world to our world. And if you'll please forgive, forgive me for the pun, we'll move from autonomy to autonomous. This is our shared challenge. We won't just flip a switch and every vehicle will be connected and autonomous. That's why we need to create technology with a clear purpose, introduce it in a responsible manner, focused on our customers, and work cooperatively to ensure that the benefit is for all road users. And that's why I'm here, that's why Honda is here today, to engage with industry and to uh, share our visions with all of you. So I thank you again for your time, and I hope you enjoyed our presentation.